Hi everyone, welcome to my channel where I talk about movies. And today I'm going to continue on with my three movie mini-series talking about three films that were directed by Alfred Hitchcock. On my video a couple, couple two videos ago, I did a, a discussion of Orson Welles' The Trial. And uh, the last film I talked about with the first film in this mini-series was Hitchcock's Shadow of a Doubt. And I didn't mean the trial to be the lead in to these three Hitchcock films, but boy, it really works out well because these are really films about trials. The trials of, they could be trial, legal trials, trials of faith, trials of love, trials of devotion. Um, and certainly Teresa Wright goes through one heck of a trial in shadow of a doubt. Joseph K. in Kafka's The Trial never even uh, is told what his crime is that he is that he is being charged with and then the next film uh, will be the wrong man uh, which Hitchcock based on a, a real life uh, uh, incident where a man uh, was wrongfully accused of a crime and the disastrous effects of that mistaken identity on his life and his life of his family but today I'm going to talk about Another film about a trial, and this is I Confess from 1953. Um, uh, and this is, uh, <clears throat> this, is a, this, this movie is a trial of faith. Um, and this, this cover art here uh, would, would uh, indicate that uh, this is a romantic confession. But it, but it really isn't a romantic confession because Montgomery Clift is playing a priest, Father Logan. And in the beginning of the film, uh, he's in the, he, he is, it's late at night and he sees the, uh, the parish's handyman who lives at the, uh, uh, who, li who lives at, at the uh, parish house and um, he sees him coming in late at night in an agitated um, condition, goes down into the church. This is Father Logan going down into the church, asks him what's wrong. And the man, man says, I have to tell somebody, I have to tell somebody. They go into the confessional and, and the man confesses that he has just killed a man. The sanctity of the confession is now uh, under fire. What, what truly uh, um, complicates this story is that there's a great deal of circumstantial evidence that points to, the, to Father Logan as the killer. Uh, and <clears throat> so he's implicated, he knows, he doesn't really know the man who has been killed, but there is a past uh, with his, before he became a priest, a, a girl that he grew up with and they had a romantic uh, attachment before he, this is during World War II, before he goes off to war. But when he comes back, uh, uh, she, has, she has married and he becomes a priest. Um, so his, and, and he hasn't become a priest because of some sort of uh, uh, rebound, but rather from a deep, deeply held faith. Um, and, and now with this circumstantial evidence against him that he has committed the murder, and there is some substantial evidence here, uh, how far will he go? How far will he go with maintaining his devotion to his oath as that the, the confession is, there, there's, uh, you know, he has to be faithful to this oath that he will not divulge uh, a confession even of a killer. This is a story of confessions. <laughs> there's, there's a couple more very significant confessions uh, that come about. Now, this was filmed in Quebec City, and it was filmed, the exteriors were filmed totally on location, and also uh, Hitchcock uh, wanted to film inside the churches in, in Quebec City, which he was able to get uh, permission to do. Uh, so we get this opening shots of Quebec City at night. It's very black and white, kind of Norish cinematography. We see look quick because uh, there's a shot going up a long flight of stairs in the middle of the city, and at the top we see 
Hitchcock walking slowly across the sidewalk at the top of these stairs. But it opens with these uh, pictures, different uh, pictures of uh, different uh, parts of Quebec, but always they're interrupted by this arrow, direction with an arrow sign, and we follow by three or four or five of those until we finally come to an arrow that points into a, to a, an apartment building. And then the camera goes in through the window. This is, this is uh, something that Hitchcock used often of what's going on behind these windows and these, these closed doors. And we see the body of a dead man. And then we see a man in a priest's garb uh, running down the street. So, and he is spotted. So this is part of the circumstantial evidence. And there's also a motive, a possible motive for Father Logan to have committed this murder himself. So we know that Fa Father Logan is not the killer. Um, so the suspense in the movie, or the tension that builds up, is to, the, is to seeing these other characters that don't know, nobody knows but us, the audience, uh, Father Logan, the killer, also the killer's wife, who, who has a who has a very prominent role in, in this film. She doesn't have much dialogue, uh, but she is going through a trial too. She is married. She knows her husband has killed uh, and has confessed. And uh, but what does she do about it? So we 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 finally do reach this moment of epiphany, and it's one of the great moments in Hitchcock's films. And uh, I've been surprised. I haven't watched these films in many years, and one of the reasons I don't particularly like to talk about Hitchcock's films because I'm so affected by them for some reason. Uh, and, you know, where, like after Shadow of a Doubt, you know, that night I, I suffer from insomnia and I lay in bed at night and I'm, I'm just going over the, the, um, the themes of the film and the emotional impact of Shadow of a Doubt. And I had the same experience <laughs> with I Confess. Uh, this is another film that I pretty much thought I knew by heart, but I probably have forgotten, uh, you know, the impact of what it had. There are some narrative coincidences here. Hitchcock himself uh, had uh, said that this is old-fashioned storytelling. He wasn't all that fond of this this movie. Um, went in during his uh, uh, Hitchcock Truffaut interview book, um, which. Uh, by the way, there's been a Hollywood reporter uh, um, uh, sort of sight and sound kind of uh, 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 poll being taken that has been taken with uh, famous directors like Spielberg and Martin Scorsese and, and uh, lots of people. And they have a consensus of, the, of they pick out their favorite books on film. And the Hitchcock Truffaut book came out to be the consensus number one book. And uh, I, I'm almost tempted to get it. I used to own it, lost in the flood years ago, but um, I haven't, so I haven't read it in a long time, but I, I'm thinking of picking it up because there was a, uh, I think it came out in the mid 60s and I had the original edition and I think there was a updated edition in the 1980s. Um, but, uh, so, but this is a film, nevertheless, it's close to Hitchcock's heart. He was raised Catholic. He was raised in a Jesuit school. He is, he is uh, making a film here about the depth of faith that, that a person can have. So when, so we know, you know, and Hitchcock loved the audience to know, to participate in the film <laughs> as we watch the other characters who don't know. But eventually, of course, they do find out. And it's this reaction of the people, especially two particular people. Uh, one is Carl Malden, the police detective. When he finds out what, um, what Father Logan has done, the expression of his, on his face and puzzlement and, 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 and sheer awe of what religious faith could be at least what this religious faith for Father Logan means, the depth of it. Um, he, because Carl Malden, as a police officer, is very methodical and everything must follow logically. What's the logic here? Why would you sacrifice yourself? 
It's one thing to not tell the confession. It's another thing to allow yourself to be sacrificed, possibly. Uh, so this, again, and Hitch Hitchcock talks about this in the, uh, in the Truffaut, uh, uh, Hitchcock Truffaut book, and he's talked about it elsewhere. I've talked about it a lot in Shadow of a Doubt, the concept of evil. Uh, so there is another shot in this film where uh, the killer has now reached uh, a kind of frenzy and, and Father Logan looks at him as he is, as, as this killer is, is, is the evil is, is intensifying within this killer and Father Logan sees him now as almost like the face of Satan. And uh, so we do have this, this is a parable of of Jesus and of Jesus' suffering, his willingness to sacrifice, not just for all of us, but even the most abject sinner. And this, this really elevates the film and that, that moment that I'm talking about, this moment of epiphany, um, which happens a lot in Hitchcock's films, is what do we do about evil? You know, because although Father Logan's devotion is, is, is truly transcendent, it also could cause the fact that he doesn't divulge a killer, it could, in fact, result in somebody else being killed. So nothing is ever totally clear-cut. Everything in Hitchcock is a mystery. <laughs> the, human, the human condition is a mystery. This, is, this film is aided by some Terrific performance, this Montgomery Cliff, this Father Logan. Um, they didn't get along. Cliff was a method actor. He had to get so into his part and that he didn't always want to follow Hitchcock's instructions. Hitchcock constructed a film. It had to go, as the police detective, uh, it had to go in a logical order in the way he constructed. Every, every, every moment, Meant, meant something to the next moment. So when there's a story told by Peter Bogdanovich in the supplements when Montgomery Cliff comes out of this church with this crowd of angry people around him and he pauses to, to look at the scope of it and then Hitchcock filmed a shot of people in the upper floors of a hotel looking down. So Hitchcock instructed Cliff to look up and then he would follow with the next shot and Cliff said, well, I don't think this character would have done this. You know, my, my character wouldn't just look up like that. <laughs> so this was the kind of frustration that Hitchcock had with Cliff. And Cliff, you know, is brilliant though in this film. He's absolutely brilliant. He studied how, how priests walked. Uh, and he got it down just pat, you know, and there's lots of walking in this film, but really what, where Cliff is so great here, he, he, this is pre uh, Cliff's automobile accident when he was just, his face is just so photogenic and so expressive with his eyes. He has these great, big, beautiful eyes, and in the trial that he is going through, he expresses that so beautifully, and then Ann Baxter plays uh, a, a childhood friend who f had fallen in love with him uh, and hoped that they would marry. He goes off, he doesn't want to marry, he goes off to war. Implication, there, there, I'm not going to tell it, but there's a long flashback in this film. Fairly, fairly long. I'm not a fan of flashbacks. Uh, but this is a good one. This does, this is, is, our flashbacks, the stories that people tell, and then we see the visualization of that story of the past. Are they real? Are they telling the truth or are they lies? Hitchcock would play around with that idea in, uh, in, uh, in stage fright uh, to a much greater extent. She's good here. She's really good, Ann Baxter. And, and again, that expression. What Hitchcock is known as the master of suspense, but what Hitchcock really was, I think, was the master of the reaction shot because that's, we see things and then we see how the characters react to what they are seeing. And this is the, this is the cinematic uh, aspect of, 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 of Hitchcock's storytelling. Um, that, this is what he believed in, a cinematic story. And, he, and also you can, you can see Hitchcock's movies 
as we are, we know he's here. Hitchcock is making a commentary on, of, on cinema in his movies. What cinema can do, what cinema storytelling is about. And while giving us very engaging characters and may perhaps some, sometimes very melodramatic situations, old fashioned storytelling as, as he puts it, um, Carl Malden playing the, uh, the police detective, just fabulous role, early role, 1953. I have to mention O.E. Hasse, who plays the killer, just an amazing face. Dolly Haas, who plays his wife. She was a, Dolly Haas was a uh, German film star in the 1930s. She comes to America, she marries Al Hirschfeld, who is a very famous characterist, characterist. Uh, drawer and Hitchcock was was a characterist himself, so they were close friends, and he persuaded. And Dolly Haas had had uh, had retired uh, from acting, but Hitchcock persuaded her to for this part. She's so memorable in this part. Now the screenplay was written by George Tabori, uh, based on a play that really affected Hitchcock in the nineteen. I think he saw it in the nineteen thirties. I believe the play is from the early nineteen hundreds, but. The elem there were elements in this story that would never pass the production code in the Breen office. So Hitchcock was in constant contact with, with uh, Joseph Breen, who was a Catholic, and Hitchcock a Catholic too, a neglectful Catholic, but nevertheless his Jesuit upbringing, you never, you never escape your religious upbringing for sure. And then they had to change the ending. and, and uh, and Tabori said, I'm not changing this, you know. So he, Hitchcock had to get another screenplay, uh, a screenwriter, William Archibald. Uh, <clears throat> I think the ending is beautiful. It's it's really, like I said, transcendent would be a word that you could use here. The music is by Dmitry Tiomkin. It's very noirish. It's a it, it very effective score. And I got to mention Robert Burks' cinematography here. This was uh, Burks' second time working with um, Hitchcock as a cinematographer. He also filmed uh, Strangers on a Train earlier. He, he films uh, The Trouble with Harry, um, uh, to, to Catch a Thief, Vertigo, Rear Window, uh, The Birds. He didn't, he didn't do Psycho. Uh, Hitchcock used a, a television cinematographer for, for Psycho. But Burke, Burks' is, uh, black and white shots here, just amazing. Uh, the uh, uh, the churches, the church spires. The the when things go wrong, we we see the, these uh, these elements of uh, Quebec City, which is very very photogenic. I, I don't I have, I have to I have to try to discover there's more films that were filmed in Quebec City. So uh, overall, I confess <laughs> it's just. Uh, you know, if, uh, these films mean a lot to me, and uh, and I'm I'm really pleased. I I, I had foregone talking about Hitchcock uh, because of how close I feel to his films, but I'm kind of glad I'm I'm doing it now. So the next the next one up will be the th the third in this three film miniseries will be the Wrong Man. Okay, thanks a lot for everybody who managed to listen. I do appreciate it. Comments are welcome. Take care.